Hello and welcome to the second part of the introduction to modern cryptography. As I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this is just a discussion about general ideas uh, about modern cryptography. We will go into the details of many of these topics later in the class. So I want to show you this, uh, this kind of chart here, this diagram. Uh, where we are doing here is this part here. We are interested in cryptography. And basically what that is, if, if you get the sense of what we are doing, is we, we're trying to obscure the message. So we're trying to encrypt. So this is the science of, of encryption, the cryptography. And there are several parts that I will discuss a, a little bit later. Now, the other part of, which is a big, the big picture here is cryptology. The other part is cryptanalysis. Now, cryptanalysis, uh, you can call it the art or break, breaking the codes, breaking this code here. Now, don't think this is about hackers. Uh, actually, very uh, prestigious academic people do work on cryptanalysis. And you actually want to do something like that because once, once you design some kind of algorithm or some kind of cipher, you want to know how secure it is. And the only way you can know how secure it is it, it, is if you uh, do a cryptanalysis on it or if you ask somebody, uh, please try to break this algorithm. So, and that's important because you want to make sure that the algorithm is secure. So this script analysis is a very important part of cryptology. But of course, this, uh, this course is only on this one, on cryptography. So to secure the message, to encrypt uh, messages or data, like I mentioned in the, p the previous uh, video. So we're going to encrypt data. Now, there are three parts of cryptography. One is the symmetric ciphers. And what these are, the symmetric ciphers, are all the ones we saw so far. So everything we have seen here is symmetric. Basically what this means is symmetric cipher is the key that you use for encryption is exactly the same key that you use for decryption. So encryption, decryption use exactly the same key. Asymmetric ciphers, on the other hand, they will use different keys, uh, one for encryption, in the other one for decryption. Of course, this is a little bit more complicated than I'm telling you now, but that's the basic idea. So symmetric is same key for encryption decryption, and the asymmetric is different keys for encryption decryption. And the protocols is basically the implementations of those uh, algorithms, either whether they are symmetric ciphers or whether they are asymmetric ciphers. So, all the parts here are important, and basically this class is going to concentrate uh, pretty much on this one, cryptography, without maybe protocols. We might touch some of them, maybe, at the end of this course, but for the most part, we're going to concentrate on these two things here. Symmetric, the ones that we have seen so far, and asymmetric ciphers that we're going to see uh, later in the class. Now, the symmetric ciphers, as I mentioned, uh, they're also called symmetric key ciphers or single key ciphers. A single key, of course, is because of the fact that encryption decryption is done with only one key. So you have only one key for encryption and decryption. So before I go into the next picture, uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about some definitions. So I'm going to denote by X my plain text. So it's my plain text. Y will be my cipher text. And K will be my key, which is only one key because we're talking about symmetric ciphers. Uh, so as I mentioned there, symmetric ciphers use the same key for encryption and decryption. So let me be more specific about that. So I'm going to show you a picture here. This is an enhanced picture of what we have seen so far. If you remember what we had, the situation here is we have Alice and Bob. They want to communicate. And there is a person here, Eve, who is always listening to the channel. So what does Alice do? Alice wants to send some message or some data to Bob. Uh, and we call that X. So let's assume in this case that X now is a data, is some number. Because we're saying everything that's going to be here is encrypted numbers. Now, there's gonna, this box that you see here is the encryption algorithm. So how are you going to encrypt? Now, to encrypt the, the data, uh, Alice has to know what is the algorithm and in the case for example of the Caesar cipher I'm going to use a Caesar cipher or I'm going to use a substitution cipher or I'm going to use it 
transposition cipher, whatever you want. And he, she has to put in the key, the key to encrypt it. So she has to lock the the um, the the plain text, the plain text X. So this one, this is gonna be the key. Now, one of the big parts of this is that above also has the key, the same key, key K. So that's a symmetric algorithm. So think about it this way. This is a lock and you have like a normal key. You put the key in it, you lock it. How do you unlock it? You use exactly the same key. You unlock it with exactly the same key. You just do the other direction. So that's basically what is happening here. When you have the Caesar cipher and the key here represents a shift of, for example, three units, then here you reverse it is a shift of negative three. So his, Bob is gonna use the same uh, key. So let's go through here. So Alice has the plain text. She takes it into the algorithm with the key. The algorithm here, which is this black box, which could represent Caesar cipher, permutation cipher, whatever, is gonna spill out the cipher text, which we call it Y. That's gonna go through the insecure channel. Of course, Eve is gonna get that message because she's listening. And this message goes to Bob. But before it goes into Bob, Bob has to fit it into this box, which is the algorithm. He also needs the key there. So he needs to put the key here. The key, uh, let me use the color here. The key K to decrypt the, the algorithm, which is usually in the scissor cipher will be shift of three, shift of negative three. So that's the uh, the uh, symmetric algorithm. Now, in all symmetric algorithm, the idea is gonna be like this. I have exactly the same key that Alice and Bob share, and this is the situation. Now, this box here might be some other algorithm. Okay, so not exactly the one, uh, maybe base text-based algorithm, number-based algorithm. Some of them we're gonna see later, and the algorithm here for decryption. So that's the symmetric, uh, symmetric cipher. Symmetric cipher is using the same key for both encryption and decryption. All right. Now one part here of this, uh, of this. Let me go, uh, scroll up all the way here. Uh, it was cryptanalysis, which I mentioned is very important because what you want to do is you want to make sure that that algorithm that you use either for encryption or decryption is secure. So you want that to be tested, to test whether that's secure or not. And so you need some cryptanalysis there. So someone who's gonna try to break it, if they succeed, then you should probably forget about that algorithm. And if they don't, then that probably indicates that you're okay. Now, not entirely, maybe you have to put it uh, to many tests so you can make sure that uh, that is secure, secure so far. Now, cryptanalysis is a big part of, of cryptology and it's the art of cracking messages or deciphering messages. So in cryptanalysis, there are, uh, it's divided into several things. One is classical cryptanalysis, which is we, this is what we actually saw. We saw some uh, mathematical analysis that we did with the substitution cipher. Remember we did some uh, frequency analysis there to know what the plain text was. Or we do a brute force attack, which basically means you're gonna try all the keys. So this is the classical uh, cryptanalysis. Either you use some property that you know about the algorithm, and using that property you break it, or you recuperate the plain text, or you either do a brute force attack, meaning you're gonna try all the keys, and then again, you're gonna uh, get back the plain text. Now, there's another part of cryptanalysis that is called implementation attacks. Uh, this basically what it is, is you're gonna talk about how, hardware here, not software. And I'll explain this a little bit later. And of course, uh, social engineer, right? So let's go into the details a little bit more. So the classical cryptanalysis, as I mentioned here, uh, you can either recover the plain text X from the cipher text or you can recover the key from the ciphertext. Ciphertext Y. So there's two possibilities. So ma the, the mathematical here, the mathematical analysis, as I mentioned, uh, is going to exploit the mathematical properties of the algorithm. 
So for example, the one we did with the substitution cipher explode the fact, the fact that there are some frequency in the letters in that message and, or the two letter words, three letter words and so on. So we exploited that property, which is, you know, we can call it mathematical property of that of the algorithm to get back the plain text. Or we can do a brute force attack, which is just test all possible keys. That's uh, what you do with, for example, the rel cipher, because the key space is so small, you have very small number of keys. So it's very possible to get to do a for brute force attack, similar with the Caesar cipher that has a small number of keys. And the implementation attacks, as I mentioned briefly, uh, is hardware-based attacks. So you're going to develop some hardware to uh, to break uh, or to recuperate the, the plain text. And in this case, it's for the most part, the attacker will have, will have to have some physical access to, to the machine, for example, your computer or your credit card or debit card or whatever. Now, the other one is social engineering attacks, which is, we can say bribing is one of them. So somebody can bribe you to give out the password to the decrypt that uh, uh, um, machine, or they can blackmail you with, they can trick you into giving your password, or giving you the key, or simply just espionage, or something that they can do also is they can call the company and say, this is, has happened many times that they call and they say, I'm the in the IT department, and please give me your password, we need to update something, or, or whatever, something like that. So these are the big parts of, of crypto analysis. Uh, of course, we're not gonna uh, do any of this uh, social engineering. We're not gonna do any of the implementation attacks because this is hardware. So for the most part, uh, if we talk about any any crypto analysis here, it will be either mathematical or brute force attack. Uh, one of those. And as I mentioned uh, before, you want you want crypto analysis. You want to do this because you want to check that your algorithms are strong enough to resist the attack. Now an attacker only has to have one chance, only one chance to break it. And so cryptology may be a little bit harder because you have to think about all possibilities on how you, in this case, let me scroll up here. You have to think about all the possible attacks that this crypto analysis can have so they don't break your your algorithm. So I'm gonna stop here now and in the next video I'm gonna talk about a very important principle that is not intuitive at all but is a very important part of what crypto cryptography is. So I'll stop there and I'll see you in the next uh, video.